So I have reviewed dozens, if not hundreds of bio sketches as a grant consultant. And I will tell you the one thing that almost everybody gets wrong. If you're new around here, I am Sarah Dobson. I'm a research grant consultant and my team and I help early career researchers get funded at NIH. So what is the one thing that most people get wrong in the bio sketch? It's the contributions to science section. This one baffles me because the NIH instructions on this are actually really good and really helpful. And I'm just gonna read them to you. And honestly, if all you do is follow the NIH instructions for the contributions to science section, you are gonna be miles ahead of almost everyone else. So let me pull those up and we will take a look at what they say. All right. so. For each contribution, indicate the following. Number one, the historical background that frames the scientific problem. Number two, the central finding or findings. Number three, the influence of the findings on the progress of science or the application of those findings to health and technology. And number four, your specific role in the described work. That's it. If you include each of those in that order, in each contribution you have in that section, you're doing great. But what I see more often than that is people who use the contributions to science section as sort of a continuation of their personal statement. It's a, like a chronology of their career. So when I was in graduate school, here's the work that I did. And then when I started this position, this is the work that I did. And they just do it in order of, um, their career. And that's not really necessarily telling us what the contributions to science are, especially if you are framing each of those contributions more as areas of research, right? You want to make sure that each contribution is actually a contribution, that you're speaking to the contribution that you made to your field or to the advancement of your field. And that's what those NIH instructions are helping you do. So again, if all you do is follow the NIH instructions for that section, you're doing great. But one of the other things that's going to make it a lot easier for your reviewers to understand and contextualize your contributions to science section is if you include a title that speaks to the actual contribution. Again, you don't want a title that speaks to the area of research because that's not really telling them anything. You want to use a title that speaks to the actual contribution. And if you can do that, that is just gonna, again, make it a lot easier for your reviewers to understand what the contribution actually is that you've made. And more importantly, how that contribution relates to your role on the current project that you're proposing, right? Remember that what you're trying to do in your bio sketch is connect your skills and expertise and experience to the project that you're currently proposing. Why are you the one who is uniquely suited to be in this role on the project? Whether you are the PI on that project or whether you are a co-investigator or collaborator, right? You just want to make sure that you are conveying to the reviewers why you're there. <laughs> why are you the one in this role? And, and why do you have these specific responsibilities? It's really important in the bio sketch to use that opportunity, those five pages, to really explain what you're doing there, why you're the one who is in that role. And if you do that well, it's going to help the entire project. It's going to make sure that the research team is well described and well justified, right? That's what the bio sketch is really for. It's for that investigator score. And so you want to make sure that the entire sort of ecosystem of bio sketches that you're including uh, really speak to the overall expertise of the team and the unique contribution of each member of the team. And that's really what you can accomplish if you use your bio sketch to its full advantage. All right. So if you found that helpful, we have a lot of tools and resources available to you to write a stronger, clearer, more persuasive NIH grant. And you can find that in our free resource library. The link to that free resource library is 
in the video description below. So make sure you go and you get your virtual library card by registering for the free research library and check out all of the other tools and resources we have available for you to write better NIH grants. See you next time.